Good morning. Welcome to Raw Online. Today we are going to discuss about intercostal spaces and its contents. In the competency based medical education, the topics covered would be under AN 21.4 to 21.7. As you can see from the slide, it covers the attachment actions of intercostal muscles. The contents of the intercostal muscle, namely the intercostal nerves, be it typical or atypical, the vessels, both the anterior and posterior intercostal vessels, the internal thoracic artery, which may not be a content of the intercostal space, but it gives origin to the anterior intercostal vessel. So is superior intercostal artery, which is giving origin to posterior intercostal vessel and subcostal artery. So these are the various topics that we are going to cover in today's session. Before we get into the actual session, I would just like to take you through a preliminary overview of the thoracic cage. You can see from here that this anteriorly depicted is a sternum, the manubrium of the sternum, the body of the sternum and the xiphoid process. So anteriorly the thoracic cage is bounded by the sternum and posteriorly what you see as faint the processes, the transpinous processes are seen. Those are depicting the thoracic vertebrae. So T1 to T12 thoracic vertebra forms the posterior boundary of the thoracic cage and in between the anterior and posterior boundaries the laterally it is connected by the ribs 1 to 12 ribs. So what you see here is the first rib which is the shortest and then in ascending order we see the ribs. So with this, this bony thoracic cage binds the structures of the mediastinum. Now today we are not going to look into the structures of the mediastinum, we are going to concentrate on this, the space between the two ribs. As you know the ribs are the costal in medical terms it is called as the costa. So intercostal, between the costal or between the ribs are the spaces called intercostal spaces. You can also see that the ribs are not bony throughout. In their anterior extent where they are attached to the sternum or rather articulate is the right word that we have to use in terms of bones. It is depicted in blue color which is the cartilaginous portion. So here it is still chondral that is cartilaginous. The rest of the rib up to the articulation with the corresponding thoracic vertebrae are osseous or bony. And the other factor that I would like the students to concentrate is the first rib is totally articulating with the manubrium sternae. You can see a small articular facet which is open here which gives the articulation for the clavicle. The second rib partly into the manubrium and partly into the body of the sternum. Third rib, fourth rib, fifth rib, sixth rib are totally attached to the body of the sternum. Then the seventh rib you can see that it is partly into the body and partly to the xiphoid process. So ribs 1 to 7 are direct articulator with sternum whereas 7, 8 and 9th rib, these 3 ribs you can see that they have an indirect articulation that is by articulating with the previous rib they indirectly are, are connected to the sternum. And what is seen here as a small protruding portion is the 11th rib. The 11th rib and the 12th rib are only articulating with the vertebra behind, namely the T11 and T12, whereas anteriorly they are not at all articulating. So, to summarize here, ribs 1 to 7 are in direct articulation with sternum. Ribs 8, 9, 10 are indirectly articulating and 11 and 12 are not at all articulating. So these ribs which are in direct articulation with sternum are called the true ribs. The 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, the lower five ribs 
are the false ribs because they are not directly articulating with the sternum. On top of it, the 11 and 12, which do not have an articulation anteriorly at all, they are called as floating ribs because they appear to be floating and they are not encompassing the thoracic cage. So, in today's session, we will be dealing with the intercostal spaces and its contents and some structures which are related to these contents. With that brief background, let us see what is present in the intercostal space. So, here you can see a part of the thoracic vertebra depicted posteriorly and the sternum depicted anteriorly. Just one space, intercostal space is depicted in this picture. So, one rib above, another rib below. So, as you can see from this picture, the brown, these are the intercostal muscles. There are three intercostal muscles which we will be seeing in the latest slides in detail. Suffice it to know now that the intercostal muscles are part of the content of the intercostal space. You can see a bluish structure which is actually membranous. We will see what that membrane is later. Apart from the muscles, you can see the universal depiction of blue, red and yellow. The red indicates the arteries. We call them the intercostal arteries. So, the one in the anterior aspect is called as the anterior intercostal artery. The artery which is posterior, this is the this is the posterior intercostal artery. So, there are two arteries anterior and posterior. Among the anterior intercostal artery, you can see that there is a pair here. Can you see here? So, one is here, another is here. So, a pair of intercostal arteries, one posterior intercostal artery for every intercostal space and then you have the intercostal veins here depicted in blue and then the intercostal nerves. These are the branches of the intercostal nerves. These are the branches of the intercostal nerves. So, in an intercostal space, we have the intercostal muscles, the intercostal arteries, intercostal veins and intercostal nerves. What is depicted here is the descending part of the thoracic iota which gives the origin to the posterior intercostal artery which we will see in detail later. Here what is shown is the internal thoracic artery and the vein which is giving branch to the anterior intercostal arteries and drain the anterior intercostal veins.